Today we are making an antenna. We had previously presented and measured loop antennas for 866 MHz. Now we assemble an antenna, which we have previously calculated for 2.4 GHz with our tools. We have seen quite a bit about loop antennas in previous videos. They are interesting because you can use them to create a band pass filter and an antenna at the same time. We made radio field measurements, analyzed the three dimensional radiation diagrams, and also measured the impedance with a vector network analyzer. I will show the link to the videos in the top right. Recently, using our dimensioning tool, we calculated the layout of such an antenna for 2.4 GHz. I adapted the layout to the copper wire that I have from an ordinary installation cable. And that's exactly what we want to build today. So, what do we need to make the antenna? I'm using an SMA connector as the base here. Of course, you could use any other high frequency connector as long as it can be soldered. Here I use the wires from a 1.5 square millimeter standard installation cable. The diameter of its copper wire kernel is 1.38 millimeters. To connect the inner conductor of the SMA connector, we need about 2 cm of copper wire with a thickness of 0.5 mm. Then we need a screw terminal and a small piece of PVC insulation. It can also be a piece of heat shrink like I'm using here. The tools we need are a ruler, side cutters, needle nose pliers, a soldering iron, a lighter, a helping hand, a small screwdriver and some solder. And it helps a lot if you make a one-to-one -one scale sketch of the antenna like I did here. You can also download the sketch. And by the way, you could help the channel a lot if you push the like button for the video and subscribe to the channel. First, we disassemble the terminal block because we only want to use the inner part. It works best if you remove the screws and then simply slide the inner part out. If the screws don't fall out on their own, like they did here, then use pliers to squeeze the plastic. Then you can unscrew the screws with a screwdriver. So when you are done with that, it will look like this. Next we prepare the inner conductor of our SMA connector. We solder it to the 0.5 mm wire. Of course we use our helping hands to do the soldering. It is very important that the connection remains absolutely still during the cooling process. This is the only way to get a clean solder joint. Then we insert the inner conductor into the SMA connector and push it through to its final position. We absolutely have to do this before we heat the whole connector with the soldering iron. It could be that we won't be able to insert the inner conductor later because the Teflon material in the connector may have deformed a bit. Then we slide our small heat shrink onto the inner conductor as an insulation. Then we need to make some preparations to solder the small screw terminal to the SMA connector. To do this, we bend a small piece of copper wire as shown here. 
The idea here is to use this eyelet as a reinforcement for the solder joint. The shape should be something like the one shown here. In order to fix the whole thing well for soldering, we have to use a little trick. We bend the wire so that we can use the clamp itself to fix it. This fixation helps us to keep the whole thing from falling apart during soldering. Now let's try to solder this all together. If the performance of your soldering iron is not quite sufficient, then you can also heat the soldering point a little with a lighter. When we are done, we should have a good solid solder joint like this. Once the SMA connector has cooled down, we can pinch off the excess wire and unscrew the screw terminal. Then we take out the pieces of wire that we actually only needed as a fixation for soldering. Now we bend the 1.38 mm thick copper wire. The best way to do this is to use my sketch or draw two concentric cycles on a piece of paper with the outer and inner diameter of the antenna. It is very helpful as a template for our construction. Please leave the wire longer on both sides. We will cut it to the right lengths later. First we bend the U-turn. Then we shape the rest of the wire. We are not soldering it together yet. Then we pull the wire through our screw terminal and fix it with the screws at the point where we calculated our feed point. Next we cut the ring of wire to just the right diameter and solder it as shown here. Now we are almost done. Only the connection of the inner conductor is missing. I bent the thin wire around the thick wire as shown here. I will solder it later when I am sure the antenna is well matched. In reality, there may be deviations from the value that have been calculated. In the next episode, I will measure and tune the antenna for you. Then we will also see whether we still have to correct the theoretically calculated feeding point in practice. The summary and the insights. We assembled the antenna for 2.4 GHz. It makes sense to construct the antenna in a mechanically stable manner, since a change in shape may destroy your tuning. The dimensions correspond to the specifications that we previously calculated ourselves. Now I'm very excited, because we will measure the antenna with my vector network analyzer in the next episode. See you then! Now stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe and support the channel. See you soon in the coming episodes.